So you want to be a certified anesthesiologist assistant. You clicked on this video because you want to pursue a career that allows you to work within a healthcare team, spend your time in the operating room, and have a healthy work-life balance. This all sounds great, but how do I get here? What schooling do I need? What GPA do I need? How long does it take to become a certified anesthesiologist assistant? My name is Jesse Hayward. We're back. I'm back in my actual apartment now. We're going to be talking about the journey and the path that it takes to become a certified anesthesiologist assistant today. Like I mentioned in my last video, right now I'm in the middle of that process. I'm in the middle of that application cycle, trying to get into uh, an AA program. And we'll talk a little bit about that more later, a little bit of an update kind of at where I'm at in the cycle. But for right now, let's get into it and let's talk about how to become a certified anesthesiologist assistant. If you aren't sure what that is, go check out my last video where I break down the role of CAAs in the healthcare system, how that's different from being a CRNA, an anesthesiologist, and so much more. So be sure to go check out that video. I'll leave a link to that right here. Let's get into it. What are the steps to becoming a certified anesthesiologist assistant? So let's say that you just graduated high school and you are a freshman in college and you want to become a certified anesthesiologist assistant. First thing you got to do is you got to go to college. Obviously you want to go get your bachelor's degree. Typically that's going to take around four years. It's okay to take more. I took five years, for example. My advice is don't worry about which major you pick. As long as you complete your prerequisite courses, it won't matter what you get your bachelor's degree. In. For example, the dean of my undergraduate school's medical program graduated with a bachelor's degree in musicology and a minor in piano performance. So you can major in whatever you want, and as long as you complete your prerequisite courses, you'll be golden. You'll be just fine. However, a lot of pre-health students do choose to major in biology, and that's just because a lot of the classes that you have to take for your biology degree are going to be prerequisites for AA programs. Now I'm mentioning a lot about these prerequisites because after your undergraduate degree, you are going to apply to AA school. And whatever program you end up applying to will want to make sure that you know your sciences, that you're proficient in your biology, your chemistry, all of those hard sciences, because that's a lot of what anesthesia is all about is those hard sciences. Each program has their own set of prerequisite courses and some are more strict than others. So be sure to do your research on that as you complete your prerequisite courses, make sure you're not missing anything or taking anything that you don't need to take, frankly. I did a lot of that. I took a lot of classes that I ended up not even needing to get into an AA program. However, I'll save you some time. I'll give you some of the biggies that you do need to know to get into an AA program. You are going to want to take general biology, general chemistry, organic chemistry, biochemistry, anatomy and physiology, physics, and calculus. Those are some of the big ones. Each school is going to be different. Some schools don't want you to take online classes. They want all of your prerequisite courses to be in person. So just do your research, go to the school's websites. All the information is on there. There's a great website called Anesthesia One Source that you can go to that has a lot of information and goes program by program. And you can see the prerequisites for, for each program. And in my case, I was able to major in psychology and minor in chemistry. So still kind of a science. A lot of my psychology was a lot of sociology, but there was a lot of really fun nerve neuroscience, a lot of behavioral neuroscience that we got to learn in my psychology degree that ended up being pretty applicable to the hard sciences that I've been learning about so far and my other prerequisites. So the so next thing that you have to do is you have to get ready to take either the GRE or the MCAT. So starting with the GRE, the GRE is the graduate record examinations and is often the standardized test for graduate school. And every AA program is going to be a master's program. They're generally going to be titled a master's of science and anesthesia. So for these programs, a GRE is going to be the most common exam you'll see applicants take trying to get into AA school. Now, the GRE is generally seen as easier, requires less of a time commitment compared to the MCAT. But if you're feeling brave, AA programs will accept the MCAT as the standardized test for entry. The MCAT is the medical college admission test. It is the standardized test used for medical school admissions. So if you're looking to go to medical school, you're gonna have to take the MCAT. The MCAT is generally viewed as harder than the GRE, so some admission committees might like to see a good MCAT rather than a good GRE. However, the MCAT is twice as long as the GRE, often requires many months more of studying and is focused on hard sciences as opposed to writing and reasoning. In my own case, since I was planning on going to medical school after my undergraduate degree, I took the MCAT and that, that took years off of my life studying for the MCAT. That was a doozy. Studying was a grind. The name of the game is practice. And if you can imagine practicing a seven and a half hour exam over and over and over again, it it is grueling and it is not fun. So really make sure that you are prepared going into the MCAT. And as long as AA programs are allowing you to use the GRE as your standardized test, 
I always just say go for that because that's going to be less studying. You're going to have more time to contribute to your GPA, your extracurriculars. That would be my recommendation for what standardized tests to take. Uh, so what stats do I need in these standardized tests with your GPA in order to have a chance at getting into an AA program? Typically stats are going to be really variable in terms of what you can get accepted into with. And the reason for that is because admission committees like to use what's called a holistic approach. A holistic view of your application means that they're going to look at every Thing. they're not going to have as much of a you need to do x y and z as much as we want to see your journey we want to see how you progress throughout school and get an idea of you as an applicant and this is very beneficial especially for people who maybe struggled early on in their undergraduate degree or goofed off their freshman year and started off with a 1.7 gpa or something trust me i've seen that before the holistic approach allows the admissions committees to see, okay, maybe you had a rough start, but did you improve? Did you want to improve? Did you put forth an effort to increase your GPA to do something hard like taking the MCAT? Did you really nail your extracurriculars? Maybe you're spending all this time working in a healthcare field. Maybe that's why your GPA is not as high as some other applicants. So point being, these stats are going to vary widely between different applicants. You'll see applicants with all sorts of GPA, GREs, MCATs getting accepted into AA school. Uh, but as far as just giving rough numbers, you want to shoot for a GPA of around 3.5 or above and also prioritize getting A's and B's in your prerequisite courses. Some programs will not look favorably upon seeing a C in any of your prerequisite courses, so be sure to get good grades in those prerequisite courses because those are the most important courses that you can take. For the GRE, it's generally seen to try to exceed the 50th percentile in each section. Uh, there's three sections, verbal, quantitative, and the writing section. So if you just get above 50th percentile, that's going to sort of change depending on what the percentiles are looking like at the time. I didn't take the GRE, so I am definitely not super well versed in how the GRE goes about the percentiles, but shoot to be 50th percentile above and you should be good. For the MCAT, you just want to try to score above 500. Just try to get above 500 and you'll be okay. These are not end-all be-all marks, but a good baseline to sort of prepare you for what stats you might need to get into AA school. Since getting into AA school is getting more and more competitive each year, these statistics are bound to increase. They've already increased so much from last year to this year because applicants have just skyrocketed. They're just, there's a lot more people that are applying to these programs now than last year, the year before. And it's just gonna keep getting bigger and bigger as more people start finding out about this career. So make sure to leave no doubt to admissions committees whether or not you can handle the rigors of AA school. So I've got my academics, what else do I have to do before applying to AA school? During your undergraduate or your gap year, for example, I'm taking a gap year, you will want to prioritize other aspects of your application to gain entry into an AA program. You'll want to gain experience in healthcare and patient care through paid work or volunteering. In my case, I am spending my gap year as a phlebotomist working in a hospital, Prioritize patient care as opposed to general health care, since admissions committees will love to see you being able to interact with patients. That's a big name of the game with anything in healthcare, especially something like anesthesia. You got to know how to treat the patient the right way, how to interact with the patient uh, in a way where, you know, you're putting this person under anesthesia. A big part of that I hear a lot about is verbal anesthesia. How are you talking to the patient when, whenever you're about to administer these drugs to this patient? That can be a very vulnerable time for the patient. So be sure that you know how to interact with patients in a way that's going to give them comfort as opposed to unrest. And like I always say, if you can smell the patient, then it's patient care. Try to find something like patient care. Get used to being with patients, dealing with all different types of people you're gonna be good for anesthesia. Uh, you'll have to spend at least eight hours shadowing an anesthesia provider. This can be a CAA, this can be a CRNA, or an anesthesiologist. In my case, I got to shadow a physician anesthesiologist, and I also plan to shadow a CAA later this month. You will need three letters of recommendation. These should be from individuals who can speak to your character as an applicant and as a person. These are commonly gonna be from professors or supervisors in your healthcare experience. Uh, in my case, my letter writers were a professor, my healthcare supervisor, and my coach, actually. And the reason Reason why I chose my coach and also those professors and, and supervisors is because those were the people that I formed the most important relationships with and the closest relationships with during my undergraduate degree. They could speak to my character better than maybe a physician that I shadowed that might be a doctor or someone that you know might be seen objectively as a better letter writer, but these people knew me the most and they're gonna write the best letters about me. That's always what you wanna prioritize. 
when finding the people to write your letters of recommendation. And throughout all this, don't forget to do extracurriculars that you enjoy. Show that you like to have fun outside of school and work. In my case, I ran track and field as, as well as making content here on YouTube. And when you apply, you'll have to write short essays about each of your activities and experiences, about all your extracurriculars. And at the end, you'll get to write one big personal statement that will detail why you want to become a certified anesthesiologist assistant. In a future video, I'll kind of go over my personal statement and give you some tips on how to write a really rock solid personal statement. All right, congrats. You're ready to apply to AA school. You've done it. You've completed your undergraduate degree. Send that application in on CASA and wait for those interviews to roll in. Each school has a different application timeline and they are all rolling admissions. So the sooner that you can submit your application, the better. In my case, I submitted my application in July with the plan of going into one of the programs that starts in the following fall. So around a year in advance from when I would be matriculating to those programs. After you submit your application, schools will then choose to offer you an interview and get to know you as an applicant better. These interviews can either be in person or virtual. Before the interview, prepare to answer questions about why you want to become a certified anesthesiologist assistant, why they should accept you, and many other common interview questions. Make sure to do your research before you walk in. You don't want to go into an interview blind because that's sort of the last barrier that you have before getting into an AA program. If you get that interview, they know that you've got the stats. They know that you can handle the rigor. Now you just need to show what kind of person you are to them. If you don't act like a psychopath and they like you, they will probably send you an acceptance and you'll get ready to start school. Now that you're in AA school, what do you do now? AA school is typically going to be seven semesters long or about two and a half years. Each program is going to be different, but generally your first year is going to be your didactic year. I mean, you'll have lots of lectures, homework, exams. Within a year of starting the program, you'll begin your clinical rotations where you get to take what you learned in the classroom and you get to apply it to the operating room. And during your last several semesters, you'll complete clinical rotations commonly at sites away from your main campus. This means you'll get to gain exposure to many different hospitals. You'll get to learn how to adapt to new environments. Oftentimes, the hospitals that you do these rotations at will be looking at you as a potential employee after you graduate and you get your certification. So be sure to treat those rotations really seriously because they are always watching you and you might be working there one day. So be sure to put on a good impression for those people um, as you're doing your away rotations. All right, you finished AA school. You are now a certified anesthesiologist assistant. You did it, very good. In total, you will spend about four years in undergrad and about two and a half years in AA school, meaning that you can become a certified anesthesiologist assistant in around six and a half years. And when you compare that to a lot of other routes to get into anesthesia like CRNA and becoming a physician anesthesiologist, this track allows you to get right into the action after you graduate. You get to start working, there's no um, residency, a lot of the rotations that you do to get that clinical experience and get that exposure to the operating room happen while you're in school, which is super unique to being a CAA and one of the big uh, selling points that I had when deciding whether or not I wanted to go into this area of anesthesia. At the end of the day, becoming a CAA is hard. The classes that you take in undergrad, the rigors of AA school, and the novelty of clinical rotations are not easy. And the AA programs are only going to get more competitive to gain entry into in the following years. The common expression about AA school that you probably heard for things like medical school, nursing, everything like that, is that it feels like you're trying to drink water out of a fire hose. Although it's difficult, I have found that the AA community is super, super tight and very supportive. One of the biggest resources that I can advocate for is the Discord server. Hop on there and you will have people reaching out to you saying, how can I help you? People that want to answer questions that are admissions committee members. So people that actually get to decide who gets in and who doesn't are, are there willing to answer your questions, which I have never seen anywhere else. It's crazy. People are really willing to help you and want to see you succeed. So you'll always be able to find someone willing to go out of their way to help you. And if you put your mind to the challenge, don't let anything stop you from putting yourself out there and pursuing this amazing career, becoming an anesthesiologist assistant. And that's it. You become a certified anesthesiologist assistant. That's the gist of it. There's a lot more nuance to it that you kind of get to figure out as you're going through the application process. Certain requirements that schools have, some of them can be really unique and really really out there. In my next video, I'm going to go over which AA program might be right for you. Go through some of the unique aspects of every anesthesiologist assistant program so that you guys can get an idea of what these programs are like, how it is to gain entry, where these programs are in the nation. So that'll be a video that we'll do sometime in the near future. And like I mentioned earlier, a quick update about where I'm at in the application cycle. Right now, I have two interviews, which is, is kind of crazy. There was a long time I submitted my application early July and it took a long time to hear anything from any of those schools, but I've got two interviews. 
coming up in about one week and the other one in about two weeks. So I'm getting ready, I'm getting prepared, I'm going through some interview questions, practicing with some of the other applicants on the Discord server. You have to be confident, you have to trust yourself, you know that you deserve to be there. You know that they like your stats, they like you on paper. It's time for you to show them who you are in person. Sometimes that can be the biggest strength that you have. You get to determine your fate from that point on. So I'm excited for these interviews, they're coming up pretty quick, but I'm gonna keep getting prepared and. Uh, I'll definitely keep you guys updated about how those interviews go. And if I get in, very exciting. We should be knowing that in just a couple of weeks if I'm getting in or not. So it's definitely a nerve wracking time, but I'm excited to see how it goes. So that's it for the video. Now you guys know how to become a certified anesthesiologist assistant. If you want to be a CA one day, let me know down below. Tell me where you're at in your journey. Tell me uh, any questions that you might have. I'll do my best to answer, help you guys out. So many people have helped me along this journey, so the best that I can do is try to help you guys. Make sure that you guys have all the resources that you need to become a certified anesthesiologist assistant. So that's gonna do it for the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Tune in to the next video where we're gonna talk about different AA programs, and that's gonna do it for this video. Thanks for watching, bye-bye.